You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by CBOE Live Vol. CBOE Live Vol is the leader in equity and index options trading technology, providing professional and retail traders with the most sophisticated options risk analysis, compliance, and trading tools. CBOE Live Vol offers a broad spectrum of advanced trading technology, including the Live Vol X, next generation execution platform, and Live Vol Pro, the new standard in options trading front ends. Visit LiveVol.com for a 15-day free trial today. And by Russell Investments, the home of Russell Indexes, which calculates approximately 700,000 benchmarks daily, covering 98% of the investable market globally, including more than 80 countries and more than 10,000 securities. Approximately $4.1 trillion in assets are benchmarked to Russell Indexes. For more information on Russell Indexes and RBX, please visit russell.com slash indexes. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. Welcome back to Volatility Views, the program here on the Options Insider Radio Network, where we break down all of the interesting trading activity and analysis and research and developments in the world of volatility. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever expanding Options Insider Radio Network. We're up to 15 programs now, listeners. I know that's pretty crazy, including, of course, this week in Futures Options, where we break down all of the amazing activity in the world of futures options. Pretty interesting stuff going on. We just recorded that a Twiff? few minutes ago here. Twiff is one of my favorite shows. Twifo. Twifo. This Twifo. Forget, you're forgetting the O. This oh, week in I'm futures sorry. options. Twifo. You got, you got FIFO, LIFO, and most importantly, Twifo. Twifo. Twifo is the big one. We, we go for Twifo acronyms here on the network. This? Didn't Twifo just IPO this week? It did. Huge, huge money in the Twifo show. Who knows? The show's only been on a month or so, and it already goes public. Uh, so uh, yeah. Crazy town for all involved. That voice is, of course, the greasy meatball, Mr. Mark Sebastian. Mark, welcome back to the Volatility Views program, sir. Great to be here. Good and, you to know, be if you, if you can't get enough greasy meatball on this program, well, guess what? We got another one for you. <laughs> Actually, he does. It's called The Business Show. It is the 15th program on the old network. You can find it wherever <laughs> you find your favorite options inside of radio programs, including via our app or iTunes or Stitcher right. or TuneIn or so on and so forth. You can also find it, of course, just by searching for uh, The Business Show. Pretty generic names. You might have to fight through some uh, search fields yeah, we, to get the, to it. We tell people to search for The Business Show options insider radio and then it pops up right away there you go if you after that or just yeah if you search for us in any of the uh any of the big major providers they should have a producer page for us and should have all of our shows mm -hmm. there yeah. or of course you can just grab our app it's baked in there as well uh, a few episodes already out there for you i believe you had some big guests mark vladimir putin and donald trump if i'm not mistaken i know putin trump uh dean parsley we've had some biggies so I think you've said uh, you said you're going to bring world leaders and world powers onto the show, and you've you've certainly done well, that so might, far. We might have to have David Cameron on. Uh, yeah, at some he's time got some time on his hands things. now. He is. <laughs> All right, with that, I think we'll get right on into the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All 
All right, and welcome to the Volatility Review. This is, of course, the portion of the show where we break down what's moving, what's shaking in the markets today. We are recording this. Unfortunately, no live stream today. If I sound a little bit different, it's because I am in the in the mobile studio here in scenic and sunny Florida. So, uh, so bear that in mind, listeners. We'll be back to the live streaming in a couple of weeks. For now, you got to get it the old-fashioned way, on demand. We are recording this right about middle of the day, middle of the session here. On Friday, June twenty fourth, and you know, not a lot happening, Mark. I think we can just end the show right now. Nah, what do you think? Boring, boring, boring day. Boring, boring life. Boring, whatever. <laughs> of course, we are um, jerking, listeners. We are coming out of the heels, the teeth of the big Brexit vote, and what a sucker punch to the market. Oh my it was. gosh! You know, all these. We were kind of joking about this last week, Mark. But all of these idiots who were bidding up the market and selling all this vol on the heels oh, of one poll. We said, I we mean, said, you know, this thing is not done, not by a long shot, and I guess nobody listened. No, and you know what's fascinating is is that if you look at where things closed on Wednesday night, uh, VIX around, what, 21, something like that? It got as high as 22. VIX futures over 20. Um, VIX had it pretty much right Wednesday night. Yeah. And then everybody decided to just to dump ski uh, and <laughs> – <laughs> and it cost them. Is that the technical you know, term? <laughs> it dumps. I mean, if you really look at it, um, what we're looking at right now is an extra 40 points on the kind of off of the relief rally, 39 points off of the relief rally from um, f that we we had on Thursday. This isn't nearly as crazy as as it might seem. This was kind of priced in, except for all of the people who unpriced it on friday <laughs> yeah. shockingly unpriced it I, and I've, I've said this before I, i've always joked that that volatility traders kind of the most bipolar slash schizophrenic slash so determined that you will in the marketplace you know they got to have it they got to have it. oh they, they don't want to touch it they don't want to touch it and they kind of got right. in that latter phase towards the end of last week and it was kind of a bit puzzling to me because it, there was still a lot more to go before right. before we figured out what the hell was going on anyone I, who I, was I, that I, I don't get it anyone who was that sanguine about dumping vol in into the teeth of this thing, which by by best estimates was kind of a pick 'em, uh, you know, yeah. uh, it, it just seemed crazy to me. I, I don't know where where they were getting their models from. And 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 polling in Britain is notoriously awful, notoriously awful. And <laughs> yet they were like, oh, do de do, la di da, la di da, do de do. Yeah, you know these people have. A, it was shocking. You think they have a fiduciary obligation to have a little bit more in their back pocket than they clearly kept. Uh, going into this vote so now they're all scrambling to get protection they're all crushing the market as you're recording this listeners uh the sell-off accelerating it seemed like it might put the yeah. brakes on a little bit but now accelerating again uh as of about an hour ago they're off about a little over two percent now most of the major indices off uh, over three percent the dow the laggard only three percent uh the s p about 3.2 3.1 percent and the Qs have been leading the charge to the downside all day off about 3.7 percent right now the, the vix up about nearly seven handles it kind of popped on the open about i think about a 26 or so uh, is where it opened it got about as high as about 26 and a quarter uh, then it started easing off getting back down into the low 20s it seemed like that initial uh, reaction was kind of uh, overblown and now we're starting to get a little bit more volatility love again as surprise surprise the market continue to sell off now mark a lot of people have been i've already seen it i mean the, already out of the gate i'm seeing the complaints i'm sure you're seeing it as well what is this this reaction is far too muted out there in the vix land the people were it's not i, I, I agree completely but we're you know we, we were joking about this on our last episode people were they were writing them up in some big major media articles saying man what a volatility explosion is going to be if the brexit actually happens you know and we were talking about how a lot of that was already kind of baked in uh, yeah. So it's kind of interesting to see now people, of course, a lot of them holding upside calls in VIX, probably why they're so disgruntled. Uh, but yes. still, what are your thoughts on what, what, how we've seen Vol play out today? You know, it was interesting. They really tried to dump it on the open, just obliterate it on the open. And then since then, uh, it has slowly rebounded. Um, last night, the July future was up over $10. At one point, it went from like below 18 to 28. All right, Mark, let's think about the ramifications. Um, how big of an increase is that? That's uh, let me see. Ten divided by 17. That's a 60 percent rally. I think I think we got up to about 60, a 60 percent rally. 
a little bit further, and XIB has to discuss shutting down. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, think about what that would have done. Oh, my science. That would have exploded things. That would have been crazy. I'm seeing Russell live tweeting a picture of himself over there at the NASDAQ um, in New York. So he's uh, he's rubbing our face in it that he can't be on the show today. So we'll have to hold him accountable uh, next so, week here with some photos of himself. But yeah, you're, that, would been, that would have been something. I mean, people were so all upset when Vix had to shut down in those flash crash with XIV. Uh, couldn't I mean, calculate any longer. Nuts. <laughs> it would have to shut itself down. So then that would have been nuts. Then overnight, the overnight session, we get futures limit down. Meanwhile, when that happens, that's when VIX really exploded because that was the only way people could, could get in, get in. Um, um, and then, you know, from there, we basically saw things uh, kind of continue to soften. Uh, and, you know, who knows from there? Okay. So... You know, that that's kind of the fascinating thing is, you know, where does all this land? You know, where does where does. Uh, um, so that that would be kind of the the interesting piece. So it was just uh, so then obviously the market rebounded from only down five to we're down three um, overnight. VIX was I mean, if the futures were up at twenty four, twenty five, they're right now around twenty two. Uh, you know, if, if that was happened, then you would have had the VIX opening 28, 29, 27. So, you know, that would have been really fa a fascinating open. Instead, we have backed off. We're off 3%. Uh, VIX has rallied throughout the day. It's now 24. You know, my, well, I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out whether this is where we land, whether this is kind of weekend risk. Because we've seen the or whether, uh, you know, things get a lot worse. It's going to be really kind of fascinating uh, to, to see kind of the direction things go from here. Now, speaking of it, worse, I'm oh, sorry. Speaking of worse, uh, we saw much worse even internationally as the, the international mm -hmm. markets kind of felt the first the first body blow from Brexit. We saw the Nikkei off uh, nearly 8 percent. That's the biggest drop they've had in about 16 years. Yep. Out there, the FTSE 100 off uh, nearly 11 percent at one point. DAX off about six percent. Uh, the CAC 40 out there in France about six and a half percent. The sterling, uh, the pound sterling, 10 percent hit about a 31 year low out there in the pound sterling. We were talking about that on Twifo earlier today. Uh, just uh, craziness out there in all things pound sterling. The euro off only a comparatively paltry about four percent. Uh, crude doesn't matter your flavor. WTI or Brent both off about five percent. The only thing really getting uh, a gleam to the upside today, aside from VIX, is uh, the shiny stuff, gold, Mr. Greasy Meatball, up about 5% as we are recording this right now. So that's, of course, off the crazy highs it had last night where it was off many, up many, many handles before coming back a little bit today. So uh, shiny stuff and vol, apparently where you want to be today, Mr. Greasy Meatball. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, I mean, vol doing real well, the shiny stuff doing real well, uh, and... You know, that's that's about the the end of it. Um, you know, skew. This is not a day where skew gets sold. <laughs> yeah. No. Shockingly, they're not out dumping skew today, folks. They're uh, they're still interested in that for for some odd reason. Who to thunk? <laughs> um, then. Uh, but we are we are seeing uh, just vol move in in really odd and, and interesting ways. This has been fascinating to watch. I mean. The low, uh, the low tick on the day. No, Mark, I know you've been out and about. You, where do you think that? Without cheating, where's the low tick on VIX today? Uh, the low ticks on VIX. I, I did look uh, earlier this morning. I thought I, I, I looked for one of our other shows. So I think it was. I, I can't. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think it was in like the 19 range. If I remember. Yeah, it was like 1950. Yeah, that's that seemed pretty. I mean, <laughs> that seems pretty aggressive it, to me. Uh, again, it looked like everyone was like, ah, forget it. Yeah, it's, it's all done. <laughs> we don't need to so, hold any of this vol we've been holding anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah that kind of, those are the same people who were buying, who were, you know, crushing it off of those polls last week. I yeah. don't, 
I don't understand that mindset. I mean, I mean, maybe you can argue the other side of that coin, too, to play devil's advocate. You could clearly say that maybe some of this is overblown because we don't – it's impossible mm-hmm. to digest all the ramifications of this, and it's only been right. about 12 hours. It's going to take years for all of this to be sorted out, all the various minutia of how they pull out and how the deal is done and which model of exiting they choose and if other – Company, countries decide to follow their lead and leave that could exacerbate things or not uh, right. so it's really there's a lot of the devil truly is in the details so the notion that we could somehow right. process this in in a dozen hours is kind of silly but on the flip side you know uh, you could certainly say that there's not an argument to be made for for selling a lot of vol on, on the heels of this no <laughs> i just don't see that argument at all no this was all silliness i, I never quite understood it uh, but you're kind of looking at it and you know, it, it, do we think that the July future 22 is fairly priced? Yeah, with what we've got today, you know, this is a 3% move. If we're going to see another two, per, two a couple of days of 2 and 2% moves, VIX is pretty fairly priced. Now, if we then see Monday, things are slow, not a lot happening, and into the 4th of July – I could see them stepping in and, and trying to dump. And, I, you know, right now we got the VIX around 2370. Uh, I could see things uh, dropping off into maybe the close as, as things – as we calm down a little bit. But I don't see a lot of reasons for VIX to settle below 20 until we figure out who's going to be the leader of the other party. Yeah, that'll, that'll be uh, – that'll be a – Who – you know, what are some of the ramifications – uh, you know, where are they going to go? You know, I think that's going to be the key. You know, one of the interesting things on this uh, to get to, to do a deep dive into British politics, but it seems like all of the regions in Scotland all voted to stay. And they, of course, yeah. uh, get that rug yanked out from under them now. So now that's that's revived the argument of whether Scotland should stay or go. So that could potentially exacerbate things again. They may try for a no- push for another vote on that. So uh, a lot of other interesting uh, items uh, to be discussed. Of course, next week has the interesting, at least domestically here, has the interesting rub of going into a long holiday weekend so uh, how that will play out again that'll have to factor into our uh, into our crystal ball uh, forthcoming here uh, you know of course we're always talking about the impact on volatility and the volatility of volatility though as you might imagine that volatility of volatility aka the vvix uh, skyrocketing mm-hmm. yet again we're on the high end of our recent range right around the 120 yeah 128 right now. crazy that's uh, that's showing that there's uh, a lot of froth a lot of stuff going on out there in those markets i don't know about you mark when you see a number like that does that scream to you hey i gotta sell this vol right now it's it's getting there it's getting there uh not quite but it's getting there uh here's what i can say is that uh i definitely see a lot of people riding both sides and vvix is as at panic levels uh even if vix maybe isn't so there there's heavy demand for vix options if you will right now uh, on both what both ends actually again Lots, you know, I know you're uh, you're you're off out and about, but it's not like we're seeing a crazy amount of VIX call buying. Uh, Calls are only exceeding puts about one point eight to one. And there's been a lot of premium buyers on the put side, not just calls. Uh, The biggest trades of the day was the July uh, was the July August twenty put spread? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> All right, and you know we saw a you know now on the other end there has just been a fanatic seller of the October fifteen puts. They are the guy has just unloaded thousands and thousands and thousands of these. It's been uh, fascinating to to watch, you know his process, but. Uh, that that has been the the kind of the bulk of everything I've seen. Yeah, you know it's uh, funny, and we'll get into that a little bit in the overall uh, volume uh, discussion for VIX, and of course for uh, the the put spread is one of the few uh, that was one of the ones that definitely got on our radar. I'm looking here at a chart of VIX while we're talking, and obviously we had uh, we hit some ridiculous levels last year in August in the flash crash. But aside from that, you know, ridiculous outlier, we really haven't seen these levels in the VIX since about oh, about looks like about December. December 14th uh, of last year, to be precise, hit about 135 uh, on the VVIX. That's the last time we really kind of floated in this relatively rarefied air from a, a volatility of 
volatility perspective, which kind of makes you wonder uh, when the if this is indeed the other shoe or if there are more shoes to drop uh, forth with. And you you mentioned the the volume out there, kind of not breaking down. Excuse me, as you might expect in the uh, in the overall VIX. And uh, that's exactly kind of what we discussed on, on the show last week as well. It was kind of that coming out of the heels of everyone buying, buying the market, selling off volatility. People weren't touching upside calls. It was kind of a bit of a mystery. And we're seeing a little bit of that again uh, today with your right to only about, uh, about 2 to 1, uh, not even, 1.6 to 1 uh, calls over puts out here in today's activity, uh, which is uh, kind of a bit bizarre if you know that anything about how VIX usually plays out uh, on a, in an event like this in a day like today, it's usually kind of, especially on a day when, when we've seen so much move to the upside and then sell off, usually it's all calls all the time. It's a very kind of one-sided paper flow, and we're not seeing that, which is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe that's a good cue then to get into our, our, our VIX options discussion. Uh, you know, it, it's a strong volume week, clearly, but perhaps maybe getting back to that argument, some people are a little bit underwhelmed by what they're seeing out there in VIX. Not not knocking the doors out of it. We haven't put up a million contracts already by mid-session today. It's only been about 580-odd thousand, which is about the ADV. So doing the ADV by about noon central is, is pretty impressive. But uh, it's certainly not, you know, one to two million like we saw just a few weeks ago. Uh, out no, there in VIX options land. So that, again, may VIX be some... VIX futures may, break, may get near breaking records. They're already at 380,000. And I don't... And that doesn't include, I think, the overnight session. You know how many, you know how many contracts trade in the overnight session? Usually it's about 10%. Was it more? I imagine They're it might be more 180, than that. 180,000 in the overnight session. How many? 180,000. Wow. That, that's got to be a new record for them percentage-wise and volume-wise oh. as well. Volume-wise, yeah. And on the day, I'm seeing 300 and... 80 but that might not be that might just be during the, the live session that's kind of what they've always said so there that, is some you know that the overnight ext extended hours volume accounts for somewhere between eight and ten percent on a given day and then you get those outlier days when something actually happens in that region that's clearly when something happens in those time zones that's when it's a huge driver for volume and yeah. clearly this did uh so yeah that's that's uh and, that's and, a huge feather for them yeah you know and the, uh to see that kind of number going up in the extended hours. Otherwise, you're right. You would have had to wait till the U.S. Uh, open. It would have been probably a, a muted response by then. People would have gotten what they needed maybe in V-Stocks or somewhere else or just waited and done some other products. Uh, so it probably would have been a more muted response to the fact that they had a product out there listed in trading and disseminating. Uh, that's a uh, that's a valuable thing uh, for them. Yeah, overall, and yeah, the rest of the week from an options perspective, it wasn't uh, it wasn't maybe uh, the barnstormer that you might expect, uh, given everything that was on the line this week. We saw about seven hundred thousand contracts on Monday, and then a pretty paltry three ninety two on Tuesday, about seven hundred thousand again uh, on Wednesday. Yesterday, about six hundred thousand going into the big vote, and then today we're uh, about at about that same level right now so far. So not overall a perhaps a uh, you know the multi million contract days that you might have expected uh, going into uh, this but again the day's not over the other shoe has clearly not dropped as this, uh, this sell-off continues uh, to exacerbate itself so we don't know how it's going to play out all said but uh, still interesting stuff uh not to spoil the top five or top 10 excuse me of the hot strikes here but there are some puts to be found there uh before we get to that let's break down yeah. like we said what, what was that mark I said, yeah, you're yeah, right. You know, today this that put spread was the yeah the July Aug twenty put spread was the who would have thought on a day like today with all the other stuff going on with VIX, you know, Brexit, everything else, that a twenty thousand lot of the July Aug twenty put spread would be our top trade of the day today in VIX options. I know, isn't that great? That's uh, that's just kind of shows you where we are from an overall volume perspective, and a lot of people still kind of still trying to figure out exactly what the heck they to do with this news and, and how to process it. Uh, so, yeah, the puts leading the day, July, Aug, 20 put spread going up 20,000 times. Uh, paper buying that spread, so buying the Aug, selling the July, doing it for about looks about about nearly 50 cents, 45 cents, something along those lines. I also saw puts kind of leading the charge on Thursday, too, with some of the biggest blocks again coming. Uh, on the put side of the fence, the July 15 puts going up 20,000 times uh, for 63 cents. The July uh, 7, July 17 put spread 
Uh, looks like uh, going up as well about 10,000 times uh, yesterday. Looks like selling the SEP, buying the uh, July, so perhaps uh, a bit of a roll out there. Uh, it's always hard to tell with, uh, with VIX because there's so much OI obscuring every single strike. Uh, that is uh, available out there. Looking at speaking of strikes, looking at what's lighting it up this week uh, from an overall uh, top ten, the hot strikes out there in Vixland. Uh, number one with a bullet, still the July 30s. That's still where the lion's share of the OI rests its head. About 400, nearly 450,000 contracts open out there of the July 30s. Uh, falls off a cliff. If you're hearing a little construction there, listeners, they're doing some construction outside our mobile studio here. Hopefully that's not bleeding through. Uh, number two. Now I'm trying to remember, Mark, the last time we had a put as a number two on our top ten. It's been quite some time. Number two is a put. The aforementioned July 15 puts, 335,000 of those bad boys open. Take the number two spot with uh, just a huge surge. Uh, number three, about a quarter million of the July 16 puts. So two and three are puts this week, Mark. Uh, put that in your pipe and smoke. And number four, 242,000 of the July 25s. Always a popular strike and month out there. Number five, 211,000. Of the July 23s, and number six, we fall off a bit, 181,000 of the July 22s. Then it's uh, more puts pretty much all the time, almost till the end. The number seven, eight, and nine spots on our top ten are all puts. The July 17 puts with about 170,000 of those bad boys open, followed by the July 14 puts with 157,000. And the July 18 puts, so pretty much the whole put strip in July is in the top five, or top ten, I should say. 150,000 of those on the number nine spot. And rounding out our top ten, the July 27 calls. Also looks like, yeah, all July this time around. Again, not surprising given the fact that so many of the events in the market right now, very near-term focused, 145,000 of the July. 27 calls, round out the top 10, about 6.47 million overall total open on Vixland, about 4.09 on the calls, about 2.4 or so million on the puts. Uh, and before we, before we uh, run out of the, the Brexit stuff, I was looking at an interesting list mark. Maybe uh, we'll see if you want to if you want to play the, a guessing game. They list the okay. uh, the top ten names in the S and P five hundred. Actually, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Top seven names <laughs> in the top in the S and P five hundred that are getting the worst hit after Brexit. You want to guess a couple of them? See if you can. Um, some surprises in here. Of, I'll give you a hint. Guess, some surprises. I'm gonna state banks. Yeah, good obviously. Guess. Uh, and any, then any particular bank, bank springing to mind. Well, let's say um, J.P. Morgan uh, and Citibank. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Morgan Stanley. <laughs> so you had a Morgan okay. in there, and uh, and Citigroup both off about eight percent today, taking it on the chin. Uh, the worst, almost ten percent, is Invesco. Apparently, they get about a quarter of their profits from uh, oh wow from the U.K. region. Borg Warner, also another one, off about nearly nine percent. Um, and then Morgan Stanley and E, e Trade, surprisingly. Off about eight percent. I haven't had a chance to dig into them. I maybe didn't know that E Trade did. Big, maybe there's uh, some other news with them. I didn't realize they were such big players in the UK. They uh, might not be. Maybe there's they had an acquisition along the along the way that that gave them a lot of accounts in that region. I'll have to dig into that. Also Schwab, about eight percent off there uh, as well. So clearly both of them uh, being directly impacted uh, by this Brexit. And then on the bottom of the list there, American Airlines, seven and a half percent. I think you can probably intuit hmm. uh, some of that as well. And just to show you how brilliant our audience is, or perhaps not so much this time, Mark. Uh, we had them. Our question of the week this week was, hey, Brexit's coming up. What, how do you think they're actually going to vote out there? We gave them three choices, Mark. We said they can vote yay or nay, or I'm sick of Brexit. <laughs> the number the results are in. What, do you, what is your vote? Well, I, I, maybe what is your vote is kind of moot now, but uh, what do you think won? And, yeah, what do you think won? Let's just say that. I'm sick of Brexit. Would be my <laughs> I threw that in there as a nice little cherry for everyone who is sick of I know a lot of you are sick of it. Uh, that got a pretty hel healthy vote, about almost a third of them voting for that. But actually, yep. nay, nay winning the day with about 43%. So that shows uh, how much our audience uh, overlaps with the British voting public, which is not that much, apparently. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of reasons, you know, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, this isn't that huge of a deal. Um, but... It's going to depend on how – whether cooler heads prevail. You know, I've made the argument that the U.S. and Canada should step in and immediately go to the British and say, hey, we should open up a, uh, a free trade agreement with you guys. I mean they already have one with Canada, which makes sense. Yeah, they have some history uh, there. And, uh, and then go from there. There you go. So they'll jump from one 
out of one union and into another, out of a frying well, pan. Well, I think if they look west, it's not like the U.S. is going to push immigration yeah, and that's free true. movement We're not going to send a lot on. of U.S. citizens to Britain <laughs> anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, and they're not going to force – U.S. isn't going to dictate uh, – I mean, the biggest reason – for the Brexit was not the economic side, but the it was all the social the issues, control yeah. and the, yeah. the migrant side. That was that was the big push. Yeah, that was certainly a surprising rallying cry for a lot of people over there in uh, in Britain, and it seems to sucker punch a lot of people, including Cameron, who weren't really expecting people to uh, to get that motivated off of that stuff. And apparently, but apparently uh, he they was, do. Apparently, he was wrong. Um, yeah, I guess you maybe think that maybe the rise of Trump over here would have clued him into that fact, but uh, apparently not. Uh, interesting Apparently stuff. Is correct. Interesting stuff here. I think we're going to keep on rolling. Uh, give you guys a chance to take the wheel a little bit this week with some of your volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779 669 4 VOL, posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, right. or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, welcome back to the volatility voicemail. This is indeed the portion of the show where you guys get to dictate uh, the questions, the comments, the talking points that we debate and discuss here on the old uh, program. And I'm just looking here, going through your your heap of uh, stuff. I, I love our <laughs> our listeners, Mark. They send in they send in. I mean, we had that epic treatise a few a few months ago about uh, about a new product and with with graphs and charts and 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 citations in it. We got this one today. We uh -huh. got some of them here with charts again. <laughs> uh, Nothing this one better came than in, charts. This one came in last week. I don't think we had, we had a guest last week. Who didn't have a, didn't you have know, a you always need to ask Mark who charted. Yeah, <laughs> this one didn't have a chance here. Really, I'll actually make sure you get a link here, uh, Mark, so you could you could view the chart uh, for yourself. Uh, as we are uh, discussing this, uh, let's go really quickly. The magic of live radio listeners, at least live for us, you get to see how uh, how the sausage. Oh, are we is. not on our our normal chat room thing no, today? No, no chat room uh, today. Uh, we just didn't. I don't think the remote studio bandwidth could handle it without exploding. Kind of like uh, you know some of the Vix products today might have. We're close to exploding. We, we're pushing it as we are <laughs> without anything else. Uh, here, I just sent you the link, Mark. This cu question comes from. And I apologize in advance for, for horribly butchering your name. This is uh, Trung Hai Jean Wen. <laughs> there we go. And uh, hopefully okay. that was close. He, he, he writes, hey, what, what the F? <laughs> I'll just leave out the last part of that. Uh, hey, Options Insider, I would love your detailed thoughts. He wants detailed thoughts, Mark. On the VIX futures curve as of June 15th, this is, again, as I said, from last week. Oh, as of June 15th. Yeah, well. from, this is from last week, so we didn't have a chance to get to it on last week's show. Uh, he said the spreads well, across the months. as months, of now as opposed to the 15th? Yeah, the spreads across the months look tight. He has a nice graph for us so we can follow along. Uh, spreads across the months look tight, as is the VIX uh, VXV spread. I love your work. Um, so, yeah, he put a nice little chart. We'll have to include it maybe in the show notes for your listeners uh, so you can play along. But he is kind of right. At the time of this chart, uh, things were fairly tight. Uh, you see, you can see a nice little uh, nice little pop out there in the Jan time frame. And then uh, that's kind of about it. Everything else is kind of fairly uh, fairly tight as he describes it. I think he was kind of a little bit surprised uh, given the fact that we were coming off last week, coming off the heels of FOMC and, of course, yeah. Staring down the barrel of uh, what would become an FOMC. I think this is kind of related to what we were just talking about earlier in the show here, Mark, about how people were last week uh, maybe surprisingly complacent, obviously maybe a little bit too much so uh, going into this vote, and now they're kind of feeling the side effects of that. You think this chart kind of reflects that? I do. I do. Um, think, Especially by the 15th. I mean, we, we saw a real pop on the 13th and then a, a pretty aggressive back off from there. Uh, and, you know, you and I were commenting. I think we even said it on last week's show. You know, I or prior to that, the reason why I said VIX to 18 was because I thought a Brexit risk was high. And then last week on the show, we were at around that level. And uh, what were we, about 18, 19, 20, actually, I think. And then, of course, they gave it all away to, uh, on, on Thursday. 
Thursday's price action is going to go down as some of the stupidest order flow in history. I mean, in human history. Uh, now, as I look at the curve, I look at a curve that is completely is it's backward but relatively flat. So what we've got is uh, obviously the weekly futures are all backward all the way out to the July 27th. July is over August, but August is actually a little a touch below September. So there is still some kind of kinkiness. And this trade is still if you go by not the numbers, but if you go by the 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 curve, um, the expectation is that sometime between the end of July and the beginning of August, uh, markets will calm down. That is that is the way this thing is pricing itself. You know, I agree with you on on that paper flow from last week. It's kind of up there in my mind with uh, you know the Soros funds all p piling into tech in about Jan, Feb, uh -huh. March of two thousand. <laughs> you know, that kind of just the uh, just uh -huh. legendarily poorly timed uh, paper. And yeah, last week I think we were all. Uh, I think appropriately skeptical, and now this week, as we see what comes to pass, that's certainly the reasons for our skepticism uh, come to pass. So yeah, I won't I won't butcher your name again. We'll just call you Mr. Wen. Uh, yeah, I, I thanks for your chart. It's just, I, I, we agree with you. It, it is kind of uh, surprisingly tight, uh, as well as the VIX uh, XV X, VXV, excuse me, uh, spread also very tight. Uh, surprisingly so, and I think we saw the ramifications of that this week. But uh, yeah, great great question. Uh, thanks for the visuals. We love visuals. If you guys have visuals in your questions, feel free to send them in. Uh, let's move on to one here from uh, Javon. Uh, he or she writes, hello, volatility team. I've heard you discuss the short VIX ratio call spread, and he puts in parentheses, sell one around at the money, buy two at the, out of the money. Uh, many times, of course, yeah, right, we have talked about that many times. That is one of our, yep. our favorite ploys in VIX land. Uh, he goes on to say, I've heard you say it's a great strategy, uh, but it doesn't work in all scenarios. What are some scenarios where this strategy uh, falls apart? We well, don't have to look too far for a strategy where this no. falls apart, Mark. Just look about, a, I think we were talking about it about a week, week and a half ago. We had already seen kind of that near term this is before the sell off uh, we saw that near term mm -hmm. spike uh, in uh, in vix and when you see that and when you know the futures get kind of backward and crazy and then the front portion that's kind of where that spread initially if you don't have it on already if you want to come in and set you're it up lose, right? that's you're where that's lose. a that's because you're right because when you want to do that spread you're selling one at the money buying you kind of want to do it for at worst even maybe if you're lucky a little bit of a credit uh, in those yeah. kind of crazy backward moments when the things already popped Kind of you missed your moment there. And then, of course, uh, you're going to upset. I mean, I was looking actually some people asked us the same question about a week and a half ago. And I was pricing up uh, some one by twos in Vixland. And the best you could do was was substantial debits. And, and yeah. that's a scenario where you're like, yeah, this is not attractive at all. You know, it, uh, well, I, I, and, and the key is going to be VVIX uh, in, in kind of figuring it out, because, you know, with obviously most of our, our listeners aren't sitting there looking at VIX skew charts all day and things like that. But VVIX really does incorporate, like VIX, skew and volatility kind of across the curve. So generally speaking, that one by two ratio, uh, if you're using it a hedge, it's going to work really well when VVIX is below 90, or it's going to work when VVIX is below 90. It's going to work really well when VVIX gets to 80 or lower. All right, that's where it kind of it has its home run potential. That's why it works so well. All right. I, you know, as I've been writing a weekly research note to uh, for clients of uh, Tullet Prebon. And a couple of weeks ago, I was pounding the table. You can sell the 19 and buy the 23. So four bucks wide, Mark, for even money on a one by two ratio. How do you think that trade's working right now? Uh, it's up nicely. Let's just put it that way. Even folks. money, yeah. That's uh, that's probably a nice. That was a right win, now. a four bucks wide. All right, and 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 it was higher than where it is right now. I mean, right now you'd be you could sell it. The, the interesting thing is you could sell it at a buck thirty. You could have sold it at a buck thirty on June thirteenth when we had that big run up. So the, these when VVIX gets really low, that is when that one by two trade works. When VVIX gets up here. This is when traders are actually looking for the other side of that trade, the buy one and sell two. Uh, and we are seeing some of that paper flow hit today. You, we are seeing some people step in and try and slap the curve. Uh, my guess is if we get another leg higher on VIX, which is entirely possible, uh, we're going to be – that will be 
by far our biggest trade on the week next week if if we do get a lay higher from here yeah the opposite side of that spread is lining up kind of nicely right now as we are of course right now as we're recording very much in the teeth of another hard hard vix rally and uh, all the other factors lining up we got a we yeah, got a related I mean, related question here from bb wins let's get into that one as I well i mean mark how, how do you how do what do you think of like you could actually do the 30 37 and a half one by two for even money I'll say you probably get that for even short right now. two <laughs> yeah, long one, short two. Well, yeah, that's that, a nice trade. That is nice for even money. That's yes, one, I like that. For, as that is one to, that like, I would look at. Outlay or whatever. Yeah, right. That is one I'd looked into. Look at coming into Monday. So there you go. And flipping the script a little bit this week. Uh, in these kind of crazy moments when things are are very juicy, you, you want to look the other side of the fence. You don't want to go. You don't want to be selling one buy into right now. Um, yeah, similar question from BB wins. Everyone's got ratios on the brain today, Mark, uh, or this week. He says, "Can you give me an example of good strikes?" Uh, for the VIX one by two ratio spread, should I use open <laughs> interest as my main factor when Why selecting strikes? Why do people strikes? get so obsessed with open interest? I don't know. It is weird, particularly it's in really weird. Particularly in VIX, open interest is perhaps and the SPX most. The, it is perhaps the most moot it is in any product in VIX because there's so much open interest <laughs> that yes. there is really no no determinative value whatsoever in OI. So yeah. Yeah, yeah it, I mean you think a market maker sitting there and I'll tell you when open interest matters. So if there's high open interest and you're trying to close something at a nickel, you might have an easier time one way or the other. Uh, the rest of the time really doesn't matter. Um, you think a market maker who's long the 30 calls if you come in to buy the 29s at a good price, he's going to be like, well, I don't get to close my 30, so I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> no. It's, a, it's silliness. Mate. Silliness. That's, silly. that's kind of the argument I've always had against stupids. Market makers aren't fools. They, they, if you, you come in on one strike, they're going to adjust the other strike, too. It's not how it works. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's an argument for another day. But you're right. Yeah, open interest is, is nowhere near uh, the, the driving factor that you may think, particularly on a product like VIX. I mean, you notice – we hardly ever mention the open interest on any of these strikes we're talking about because it's all huge. It's all a quarter right. of a million contracts or more usually. So, uh, yeah. Th yeah, a lot of these are, it, are just crazy. I'm looking, Mark, from July, from the July in calls, let's, you know, ignoring, if we look at up the line, out of the money, into the money, puts the calls. And now, mind you, we've had a huge day today. And the open interest on the July 14 puts 160,000, 15 puts 330. 16s, 250, 17s and 18s, and 19s all around 150. And then if you flip, you then go to the, the 19 calls, which are over 100, the 20s, 100 and quarter, 100, 100, 100. I mean, it just, there's there's all the, all the liquidity you could ask for. You know, say what you will, but, you know, I would say one of the great arguments for keeping single list names is that you actually get way better liquidity when you need it because there's the there because everybody is going to be there um, and they're required to be there. It's not like these exchanges where, you know, I have the ability to hide things. Um, and so, you know, despite the fact VIX is flying around, markets are 10 cents wide to a nickel wide. Uh, and in a lot of other names that are multi list, uh, they don't look nearly as 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 appetizing. And by single list, obviously, you mean listed on one exchange versus, you know, listed on every exchange. And people can kind of right. uh, people can kind of scatter a little bit if they need to in those products. Yeah. Right. When, you, when you have one place to be, you kind of got to be there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that is yeah, yeah, that is one argument. Of course, the counterpoint to that is all, you know, the, the technology risk and shutdown risk and everything else that goes along. Oh, with yeah, that. it's a the crappy. SEC tends to take a, a dim view on that these days. But that's a, a conversation for well, another day. But still. I, yeah. I mean, I think that I think that the solution to that is. When the technology goes down, allow the market makers to continue to trade just like SPX. I know it sounds shocking, right? That but sounds, you think those uh, guys won't trade? <laughs> that sounds interesting. Uh, I'd be curious to see if, the, if an exchange would go for that argument. Uh, of course, we see something analogous to that on the future side of the fence now when you know, they, they, they go limit up or down. And you still have to kind of print the options without the futures. You have to do a lot of synthetics. You, you can kind of play that way, too, I suppose, uh, if you mm -hmm. had to. Of course, if the platform's down, it's a completely different story. Nothing's straight in them. Uh, and that's kind of what they're worried about. But, yeah, it, interesting stuff. Uh, let's get to the other the end here of BB Wins' uh, uh, question. We kind of answered it for you the first part. Yeah, you don't want to be uh, lining up 
one by twos right now. You want to be looking the other way. You kind of missed your. Hopefully, you had this trade on already, you and it worked. Chance. It worked out really well for you. Now you want to take it off, yeah. and you want to go the other way. Mark was just outlining. What were those strikes again, Mark? You were looking at the the the, like the, the, the buy one sell two. Oh, buy one sell two. I was just pointing out the uh, the thirty thirty seven and a half, or uh, yeah, the thirty thirty seven and a half for uh, you know a slight even money or a slight credit. And then you've got, uh, you know, so if he's looking to hedge, I, you got to say call spread is is the way to do it, not not some sort of crazy because uh, there's there's nice skew above 30. You know, I, I, the when you break out above 30, skew starts to get kind of a little more expensive and a little more fun to trade. <laughs> yeah, a little more fun, I think, is uh, is a good way to put it. And we've obviously already uh, already debunked the second part of your question. Open interest is not as meaningful, particularly particularly uh, in a product like VIX, where uh, good luck uh, making sense of any of that open interest. There's hundreds of thousands on every strike. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of moot uh, from a strike selection uh, standpoint. All right, great questions, everybody. Now we're going to keep on rolling uh, into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the Crystal Ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the Crystal Ball. This is indeed the portion of the program uh, where we break down what is moving, what was shaking, and what the volatility gods hold in store for us. I should say we attempt to divine what the volatility gods hold in store for us. It's not always uh, not always a, uh, shall we say, successful <laughs> uh, as it was with uh, last week when we were all kind of prognosticating as to what would happen. Of course, today was a big question mark because we were coming off the heels of the Brexit announcement. It seemed like the market was really fading the Brexit, they were going the other way. They were crushing vol. Yeah, it seemed were. like everyone was was kind of uh, leaning that way. So it was kind of hard not to get swept up in that as we were making our picks, even though a lot of us were still leaning a little bit higher. Uh, Russell Russell leaned to the highest uh, with his 18 and a half level. So I guess by default, he's the winner. Mark, you were kind of fading the other way. You were fading Brexit hard. I, yeah. You were going you were going a, a stout 15. Um, a nice 10 handles or so close to below where we are now. Yeah. And I, I was kind of the Goldilocks porridge of the week. I was about a 17. Uh, all of us clearly uh, way off, clearly underselling uh, the sucker punch. That was the Brexit, even though all of us thought we all thought it was going to be close and we thought there'd be a little bit more vol, but not uh, it would eventually come off after. The, yeah, not I, what I we're mean, seeing. I think that. Uh, you know, Russell's thing was that, oh, you know, it's not as uh, big of a deal. Uh, you know, th that's not why we're selling off uh, and that, you know, markets are still going to have problems. Mine was, well, that is why markets are selling off and they're not they're not. There's no way they're that dumb. And you were like, well, I'll just ride the middle. Yes, yeah, exactly. That was, what happened. That was, that was where exactly my word. Well, you guys get you, I gave you the dubious honor of going first, and that's what happened. Sometimes someone, someone has to make a show of it at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, right. speaking of making a show, uh, since Russell isn't here, we'll give him a first pick and we'll give him we'll pick for him and we'll make uh, a nice, a, a, nice a nice shameful pick. I think he's going to feel that next week uh, all all of this will be sorted out and all of this volatility will be a moot point. So I think Russell's going to fade some vol next week to the tune. He's going to pick about a 12 in the VIX cash. That's what I'm giving him. Uh, so there you go. That's what he gets for missing the show today. He gets a nice whopping 12. <laughs> I wonder if he'll appreciate that. Probably not. Uh, all right. As we move on, I'll go next because you always get angry when you got to go first. Uh, let's see. We got about right now as we're recording listeners, VIX uh, hovering about a 23 and a quarter. Uh, right now, of course, uh, we have a big holiday weekend we're coming into next week, so that may or may not play a factor. Again, we have a lot of other shoes to drop uh, in the meantime. I'm going to say we're going to be lower than these levels, but not crazy, appreciably lower. I'm going to say about – I'm going to give us about a 21 half uh, for this time next week. So there you go, Mark. You got a nice range there. You got Russell on the downside at, tw at 12. <laughs> you got me. You gave Russell 12? Yes. <laughs> You got I was going to give him 30. So, I was going to give him 30 because I know he's, you know, he's capped in paranoia world's ending. Well, that's why that's why I wanted to go the other way to make it even more, deep, uh, nice. more deeply like insulting. Uh, I'll take uh, you know what? I'll take uh, 20. I'll take 26. 
26. Wow. You think you're going to get a little, a little more before the end, before, the, before it starts coming off, huh? Yep. That's my thought. See, the question, though, is you got the long weekend next week, so that might start playing. If people were willing to sell, sell Vol Maybe. last week with, uh, with the vote still ahead of them and still willing to sell it this morning uh, yeah, after the there's... Vol, then what the hell are they going to do with a long weekend ahead of them, you know? I don't know. I think that there might be uh... – I think I think there's going to be a, a little bit of fall through on. I think there's going to be some shaking off and shaking out on Monday. That could possibly be. We shall find out, sir. That's what makes the show interesting. Unfortunately, speaking of shows, that's about all the time we have for this episode of Volatility Views. A little bit shorter show, as I said this week, as we are all uh, on the road running around, still making uh, heads or tails here of this uh, madness that is called Brexit. Uh, but before we go, Russell's not here, so I'll do his plug for him. Uh, of course, head on over. We do all of this data we get throughout the show. Listeners comes for courtesy of our friends. In fact, the show comes courtesy of our friends over there at LiveVol. So check out their data shop, datashop.cboe.com. If you're listening to this show and say, hey, I'd like to get some of that data for myself, but maybe I only want a specific, I want a couple of months or a couple of series or a couple of years in product X or product Y, that's the place you can go uh, and price it up a la carte. And if you have questions or they have an issue, you have a product they don't have or you want to see listed in there, contact them. I know they're pretty willing to work. They want to hear from you guys. They, I, you know, I've been talking to them. They really want to see how, what the reaction is to this data shop and how people are liking it. If they don't, what they don't like. So if you see something there you like or you don't like, let them know. Uh, they want to hear your feedback on this. That's datashop.cboe.com. And Mr. Greasy Meatball, before we go, while you're typing furiously, uh, what is coming up in the land of the pit? Uh, well, uh, obviously, besides the business show, we've got our, uh, our our professional trader summit in Chicago. Uh, come see me and Mark. Come see Russell. The whole the whole shebang. It's going to be a great time. Uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, it should be it should be a lot of fun. Come out and see us. Uh, Mark will put the link in the show notes, and uh, and we'll go from there. Sounds like a plan. Listeners, come see us. If you are going to be in Chicago, uh, the mobile studio will be back to Chicago by then, so don't worry. Uh, check it out. And on behalf of the Greasy Meatball and even Mr. Corner Office and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading and streaming and subscribing to the show and, of course, for sending in such great and detailed questions complete with visuals. Keep them coming. And we'll see you next time right here on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by CBOE LiveVol. CBOE LiveVol is the leader in equity and index options trading technology, providing professional and retail traders with the most sophisticated options risk analysis, compliance, and trading tools. CBOE LiveVol offers a broad spectrum of advanced trading technology, including the LiveVol X, next generation execution platform, and LiveVol Pro, the new standard in options trading front ends. Visit LiveVol.com for a 15-day free trial today. And by Russell Investments, the home of Russell Indexes, which calculates approximately 700,000 benchmarks daily, covering 98% of the investable market globally, including more than 80 countries and more than 10,000 securities. Approximately $4.1 trillion in assets are benchmarked to Russell Indexes. For more information on Russell Indexes and RVX, please visit russell.com slash indexes. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.